there, Kristen here with another Roll20 tutorial. In this video, I'll be talking about a series of tools that you and your players can use to add notes or draw pictures directly to the surface of the tabletop. You can find these tools over on the tabletop toolbox when you mouse over the paintbrush icon. There's several common properties to remember about drawings, shapes, and text. First is that doodles ignore grid snapping while moving, scaling, or rotating. The second is that you can alter the appearance of drawings or text at any point in time, not just during their creation. For drawings, you can change the line color, the fill color, and the line weight, and in the case of text, you can alter the font type, font size, and color. This is all done via a pop-up menu that displays while using the drawing tools, or if you select an existing drawing or line of text that's already on the tabletop. The third property is that neither drawings nor text are treated as tokens, even if they're added to the objects and tokens layer. The only advanced features available to them are grouping or ungrouping. The shape tool is for drawing squares, rectangles, circles, and ellipses. The default shape is set to rectangles, so if you want to draw a circle or an ellipse, hold down the Alt key before you begin to draw. You can force a shape to snap to grid points by holding down the Shift key. The freehand tool allows you to draw organic lines and non-geometric shapes. Unlike the other two available drawing tools, you can't snap to the grid while drawing with the freehand tool. It's best to use the freehand tool when you want flowing illustrations like rivers, trees, and scary Cthulian tentacles. The polygon line tool draws lines and shapes by connecting points tapped out on the tabletop. This tool is ideal if you need to draw complicated shapes that require a degree of accuracy or rigidity, like a catacomb wall or a church's rooftop. To draw with the polygon line tool, first click on the tabletop where you'd like to start your drawing. Next, click to where the next point in the polygon or line should be. You continue this process until you've completed what you've wanted to draw. A right click or hitting the escape key will finish the drawing. If you tap very close to the initial draw point, the polygon will auto-close. If you find you've made a mistake partway into your drawing, a Control or Command Z will undo each consecutive segment you drew. Holding down the Shift key while drawing will force the segment points to snap to the grid. If you want to draw straight lines instead of polygons, just right-click after drawing the very first segment. You can add text to the tabletop with the Text tool. Unlike Doodles, items of text will snap to the grid from the bottom edge of a block of text. You can ignore snapping by holding the Alt key down while you move or rotate. Presently, all text you add to the tabletop is left aligned, but you have a couple different font types to choose from, as well as font color and size. You can delete individual drawn or typed elements by selecting them and hitting either the Delete or Backspace key. A player can only remove items that they have added to the tabletop. The GM can delete all doodles and type off the board all at once by clicking on the Clear Drawings option. This will open a new window to confirm the move so you don't clear the board by accident. This type of deletion happens on a layer by layer basis, so make sure you're on the right layer before you click on Clear Drawings. You wouldn't want to inadvertently delete all your GM notes in the middle of a game. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Check out our YouTube channel for more Roll20 tutorials, and as always, you can read our help documentation over at help.roll20.net. If you have any further questions on how to use our virtual tabletop, visit the official Roll20 forums. Happy gaming!